Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now August 25th of 2021 and ever since the very end of the Bad Batch Season 1, a lot of Star Wars fans around the world have really been looking forward to what Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni have in store for Disney+, Plus, and of course for everything Star Wars when it comes to the new lore and Star Wars Legends coming back. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars updates. Also, guys, if you would like to go ahead and check me out at Mike01 on Twitter, you guys can go ahead and do so if you would like to. Now, we're in a very interesting position right now because we do have John, George, and Dave all working together as a team to really bring back tons of Star Wars legends. Now, Legends is a big deal. I mean, this is something that a lot of hardcore fans grew up with in the 1990s into the early 2000s, and it really technically stretched all the way till 2013, I should say, which actually took place one year after Disney took over Lucasfilm, the last book being Star Wars Crucible. But I digress. What's really interesting has all to do with creator Jon Favreau, and exactly what he's planning for the future of the Star Wars universe. So given that Favreau is very much invested in really kind of giving the fans a bigger and broader story that has to do with Luke, Grogu, Din Djarin, and others out there a part of this Mandoverse, we got The Mandalorian Season 3 filming very, very soon by this September, we have the Ahsoka Tano series, we've got the Kenobi show, Star Wars Andor. I mean, it's all going to really come together and have a lot of major connections that will also have saga-wide implications on the Skywalker saga in unexpected ways. So, the thing about all of this that really takes me by surprise also involves actress Daisy Ridley who portrayed Rey in the sequel trilogy. So, with that being said, of course, now that both Disney and Lucasfilm are focused on their new Star Wars universe with projects such as Star Wars Ahsoka and even the third season of The Mandalorian, it's best to describe that currently Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni are actually devoting their life to bringing back a majority of Star Wars legends for the fandom to enjoy around the world. However, it's described that in a recent interview with actress Daisy Ridley, Ridley went on to reveal something significant about creator Jon Favreau when it comes to the Star Wars universe. At first, Daisy was questioned about her experience on the set of Episode 9, to where she was eventually on topic about how Kathleen Kennedy was going over multiple choices for co-writers to join J.J. Abrams for Episode 9, and that at one point in time, Favreau was actually on the list to join J.J. Abrams to create Episode 9. However, Ridley unveils that Kathleen Kennedy at first did not trust in Jon Favreau and did not want him on board for many of his creative ideas that he was pitching to the Lucasfilm creators and director J.J. Abrams. Daisy goes on to reveal that Jon Favreau and Kathleen Kennedy had actually met at one point in time, discussing a proposal on how he would actually treat the characters and the story with Abrams, and that Kennedy was not supporting Jon Favreau, and that Favreau had many ideas that would respect George Lucas and his vision. However, that was actually thrown to the wayside as Kennedy wanted to shift away from Lucas as much as possible. Now, on top of that, Ridley also reveals that even J.J. Abrams tried to get Favreau on board as a co-writer after Kathleen Kennedy refused to accept him to come on board, and that this further created a tension between Abrams and Kennedy's decision on who would join the last film of the sequels. This is essentially what caused some conflict between Favreau and Kennedy for The Mandalorian Season 1, since Favreau wanted to bring in Luke Skywalker even for the first season, which was also refused by Kathleen Kennedy when she had more creative power. On top of that, Daisy Ridley also makes it clear that Favreau wanted to insert many prequel references to the last film and to respect the Skywalker bloodline in greater detail. However, Kathleen Kennedy wanted to steer away from that concept and focus strictly on the character Rey to change things up a bit. Daisy also revealed that Jon Favreau wanted to keep trying to pitch wonderful ideas to Miss Kennedy and how he could improve the overall nature of Star Wars in order to shift away from the backlash that The Last Jedi caused for many fans out there and only one of the best for the franchise to grow successfully at the time. However, Chris Terrio was ultimately chosen for co-writer of the film since he agreed to many of Kathleen Kennedy's requests. 
I want to go over something that really kind of gives you a different perspective on things here is that we all know that J.J. Abrams is the one that replaced Colin Trevorrow. After Colin Trevorrow was fired from episode 9, he had the script for Duel of the Fates. Now, Duel of the Fates was going to be a very different film, drastically different than what we received in J.J.'s version. In fact, there were multiple versions of J.J.'s movie uh, before we actually got to the final version of all of that. But we're talking about what, of course, could have been if Favreau really got the role of co-writer. It really makes you wonder if Kathleen Kennedy had accepted him to come on board and accepted his pitches and his proposal to fix Star Wars and really bring it in the right direction. You could only wonder what Episode Nine would have been like in comparison to the J.J. Abrams version with Chris Terrio. Now, you guys may very well not know much about Chris Terrio, but Chris Terrio has connections with DC, and some fans were really kind of using that as a piece of criticism. Now, when we go ahead and also examine Daisy Ridley, all right, she's been more outspoken about her experience on the set of Star Wars and her overall experience of Episode Nine and the sequel trilogy's end and her experience working with actors like Adam Driver and Ian McDermott. Now that she's no longer a part of Star Wars, at least in a significant matter, she's talking more and more about the truth and her true feelings about her stance on the franchise. We've seen John Boyega do this, we've seen Oscar Isaac do this, and it really came at no surprise. I mean, we all pretty much knew that they weren't having the greatest time with the sequel trilogy because of how inconsistent it really was and how it was going back and forth multiple times. I mean, the whole nine yards, right? The other thing is this, is that Jon Favreau, I believe, would have really steered things in the right direction before things went sour too fast. A lot of fans were divided even more so when it came to episode nine. You know, a lot of fans didn't necessarily like Palpatine's return. A lot of fans liked Palpatine's return but they didn't necessarily like how he returned. Now, I for one, I've talked about my stance on Palpatine multiple times, is that I actually like the fact that Palpatine was in the movie. I will admit that those are probably the only scenes that I really like about episode nine. I've gone over this in my review in the past that when it comes to the sequel movies, The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, The Rise of Skywalker, I like the movies when it comes to bits and pieces of those films. I don't like the movies as a whole. You know, when you look at, of course, the original trilogy, I can watch that start to finish, no problem. When I examine everything when it comes to episodes 7 through 9, it's like I only like to handpick specific scenes to watch and examine. That's how I felt with the sequel trilogy, and that's especially how I felt with episode 9. The key points were the saber duel between Kylo and Rey, the Palpatine sequences, and of course, you know, you had other scenes in there that had to do with Luke's Force Ghost. Those are pretty much the highlights of the movie. So, in hindsight, I mean, it would have been a far different approach if Jon Favreau were to be able to actually get on as co-writer and help J.J. Abrams in the mix. So, like I've said before, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.